from Babylon and Timbuktu. Afro-Asian culture goes to Europe. The Sumerians, Babylonians, and Ethiopians were black people. They contributed much to the advancement of civilization. Because they studied astrology, they were capable of formulating many principles of astronomy. These black people were so sagacious and skillful that they were able to divide the years into months, weeks, hours, minutes, and seconds. In mathematics, they developed a decimal system. The most famous of the Babylonian kings was Hammurabi, who ruled about 2150 BC. He was outstanding for his codification of a system of laws founded on retaliation as the punitive measures for crime. He also established a seven-day week, with the last day a rest day or a Sabbath. This idea was adopted by the Hebrews and then transmitted to Greeks, Romans, and other Europeans. The literature of the Babylonians is quite interesting. Long ago, these black people wrote with sharp instruments on clay tablets. Thousands of these tablets have been found, and some of them disclose a popular work known as the Enuma Elish, or the Creation Epic, the story of how the world began derived from the Babylonians. After the dispersal of mankind at the Tower of Babel, the Black Hamites migrated toward the east, south, southwest, and the west. These Black Hamites settled in the land of Canaan. Later on, it was called Israel. The land of Canaan gets its name from the youngest son of Ham, who was Canaan. The Canaanites were the primordial aborigines of the land of Canaan. We may call them Africans because of their blood relationship to the other inhabitants of the African continent. There were 11 Canaanite tribes living in the land of Canaan and surrounding it before the black Israelites possessed it. The greatest cultural and commercial cities of these black Canaanites were Tyre and Sidon, sometimes written Zidon. The city gets its name from Sidon, the firstborn son of Canaan. The Sidonians and the Tyrians were of the same race, and the kings ruled over both of these cities. In many history books, you will read about the Sidonians under the name Phoenicia. The Greeks called the Sidonians Phoenicians, land of palm, because they found many palm trees there. But the Sidonians called their nation by the name of Kenan or Canaan. Phoenicia or land of the Sidonians was located to the north of Palestine along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. Bounded by that sea on the west and by the mountain ranges of Lebanon on the east, Tyre and Sidon were founded about 2300 BC. The Tel El Amarna tablets show that Tyre was a place of great strength in the 15th century BC. Sidon was still older. For a long time, it was only the black Phoenician city known to the Greeks. Even after Tyre took the leadership, the Greeks and Hebrews spoke of the Phoenicians and Sido as Sidonians, and King Ethbal of Tyre is called King of the Sidonians. These black people were proficient in philosophy, astronomy, geometry, arithmetic, and navigation. They had good harbors, which enabled them to navigate to distant lands such as Cyprus, Sardinia, Crete, Rhodes, Cadiz in Spain, Sicily, Carthage in North Africa near Tunis, Tangier, Ophir, and the Canary Isles. These Phoenicians were skilled also in metalwork, needlework, and embroidery. They extracted dye from shellfish abounded in the adjacent waters. This dye became known later as Tyrian purple. They made glass from the white sand of the Mediterranean seas and coast. The Phoenicians spoke a Hamitic Semitic language so closely allied to the Hebrew that Phoenician and Hebrew, though different dialects, may practically be regarded as the same language. As it was previously stated, there were 11 Canaanite tribes, Sidonians, Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Gergesites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. Hebrew has its origin in the Canaanite language. When Abraham became, came from the region of Babylon to the land of Canaan, he found the Canaanite language similar to that of his own language. Abraham communicated very well with the inhabitants of the new land, adopted the Canaanite language, made certain modifications, and it became known as Hebrew. The Hebrew language was very similar to the Canaanite language, Canaanite says the Bible dictionary. Phoenician or Canaanite can be classified as an African language because the Canaanites were blood brothers of the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Nubians, Sudanese, and other Africans. The Phoenicians established a colony in North Africa called Carthage, and they, the Car Carthaginians, always considered themselves Canaanites. When Moses led the black Israelites out of Egypt, Northeast Africa, Moses died in the wilderness. Then Joshua led the Israelites into the land of Canaan and disposed the Canaanites. This possessed the Canaanites. 
Now it is written in a Jewish book called the Babylonian Talmud. For when the Africans came to plead against the Jews before Alexander of Macedon, they said Canaan belongs to us, as it is written, the land of Canaan with the coast thereof. And Canaan was the ancestor of these people, ourselves. These Canaanites or Africans were driven out of the land of Canaan by Joshua. About 332 BC, Alexander conquered Palestine. As stated above, the Africans came to Alexander claiming that the land of Canaan belonged to them. The point I want to elucidate is that these Canaanites considered themselves Africans. Consequently, we can correctly say that the Hebrew Canaanite language is one of the African languages. Many of the private houses of these black people were equipped with cisterns for storing water. The wealth of Phoenicia or Carthage was predicated on clandestine technical procedures and manufacture, secret mines of advantageous and expensive metals, concealed secret trading posts in the remote areas from Ethiopia to the Pillars of Hercules. Their knowledge of navigation enabled them to reach the British Isles and the Arctic Ocean. The English alphabet derived from two ancient black nations, the Phoenician Canaanite alphabet and the Hebrew. The Phoenicians had a powerful navy. They were a great trading people. When Phoenicians traded with the Greeks, the Greeks did not have an alphabet. As a result, they adopted the Phoenician alphabet in order to transact business. The Greeks passed the alphabet to the Romans and the Romans transmitted it to the German Anglo-Saxon tribes. Then it was brought to the British Isles. The first two letters of the Phoenician and Hebrew alphabet are Aleph and Bet, which is similar to the word alphabet. The Black Phoenicians also gave a system of weights and measures to the Europeans. The city of Carthage was called the Queen of the Sea. The Carthaginians controlled the commerce in the Mediterranean Sea. A new nation emerged in the peninsula of Italy, Rome, which challenged the commercial interests and supremacy of Carthage in the Mediterranean. This state of hostility led to three long wars called the Punic Wars. The first Punic War was in the years 264 to 241 BC, mostly naval battles, which Italy won. The second Punic War was fought in the years 218 and 201 but you see, and a black general by the name of Hannibal was the extraordinary figure who did what was considered by the impossible by crossing the Alps with elephants. In Italy, he was victorious over the Romans. He was very resourceful and crafty, and when he got into a difficult situation at one time, he drove herds of cattle into the Romans. His unexpected victories amazed and terrified the city of Rome. But at the end, because of the lack of men and supplies, he had to return to Africa, Carthage. The Third Punic War was in the years 149 to 146 BC and fought at Zama in Africa. Because of Hannibal's skill in warfare, his strategy is taught in military colleges around the world.